In today's video, I want to talk about the story of Marcus Madison. Now, this is a really relatable story for someone like me. So I just want to have an open conversation. It's going to be very lightly edited. I don't want no cutscenes. I don't want no kind of entertainment because this is quite a serious topic and quite a serious news story. Now, if you don't know who Marcus Madison is, let me give you a little bit of a backstory. He's a 27-year-old footballer who's currently on loan with Bolton Wanderers. He's currently playing for Cholton, but he is on loan at Bolton. But I remember Marcus Madison from his days at Peterborough and I'd say that's possibly where he made his name for himself. He he was at Peterborough and arguably he was probably a standard too high for Peterborough in League One. He was definitely a championship level ability player, if not maybe in the Premier League as well. And he probably knew that himself. And there's a lot of um, negativity around Marcus Madison, especially at his time at Peterborough. He seemed to have fallen out with players, with managers. But again, this is only the perception that the media and social media had for him. So I don't know generally was he actually unhappy and why he wanted to leave. Um, he went to Hull, it didn't quite work out for him and he dropped the division back into Cholton and then it didn't quite work out for him at Cholton and he was then at Bolton Wanderers. He's now put up a pretty worrying Instagram post at the age of 27. It seems to suggest he would like to quit. So let's put up the Instagram post right now. So in the Instagram post, the first thing I notice about this post is the picture of him. Now, he's got the tattoos on the head, he's got the hairstyle, a little bit like a Mohican kind of style, and you instantly see someone with tattoos, and you think to yourself, arrogant, you think to yourself, cocky, you think to yourself, that perception of a bit of a bad boy, um, but what I see here is a player who's unhappy, and the reason I say he looks unhappy is the fact that he's just dazing, the fact that he's segregated from the group a little bit, a bit like the Ashley Cole situation at Roma, which is a little bit understandable, because he's at a lone team with possibly someone he doesn't know, with players that are not his friends, he's playing away from where he lives, and there's been a lot of rumours and a lot of chat about Marcus Madison wanting to play near his family, and Bob Wanderers, he's seemingly been staying in a hotel pretty much the whole time he's been there, spending time away from his little girl, which I can relate to. I can't imagine what it's like to spend so much time away from such a young little girl or young little boy, it doesn't really matter. Um, staying away from your children must be incredibly tough, and if you don't get on with your teammates or if you don't fit in, it must be even more incredibly hard. But in the post, he went on to say, well, the football industry has eventually broke me. All the abuse, pressures, and Metonymy, but metonymy of the last two years has just got to me. I've tried to fit in and be happy, but I can't be happy in a winning team fight for promotion. It's clearly something deeper. I'm returning home to think, do I want to play football anymore or is it just it doesn't bring me joy at all? I can't thank Ian ever enough for understanding and wish Bolton Wanderers all the best for the final run. With a clapping emoji with health being hashtag. Now, this is most important, and I think people seem to forget about this, that mental health can affect anybody. And this is very relatable to me because I've got people very close to me who have suffered and continue to suffer with mental health. And I want to highlight this. I want to bring up the, the chat and the talk about mental health in football, especially with social media. We've all seen what's been happening with social media, especially on Twitter. I think it might be the same for Instagram, where a lot of players have been racially abused. We are very, very quick as a human race to point out negativity surrounding a certain individual for whatever situation you face yourself in. Now, this is talking about football. So for Marcus Madison, for example, we're very quick to determine facing a book by his cover. He looks like a bad boy. He looks cocky. He looks arrogant, so he's definitely someone we don't like. We also bring up the fact that if he doesn't hit some form, if he doesn't hit to the standard that we expect him to hit, we're constantly on his case. We're constantly abusing him. You're not good enough. You should be doing better. Your attitude stinks. All this is when we don't even know who the player actually is behind the game. We don't know what he's like, what he's going through, and this can be relatable to all footballers, especially going through a harder private life that they don't like to share. And if you think to yourself, footballers should be happy. They live in the dream. 
They're living the dream for maybe you and I, but that doesn't mean that they must be happy. If you think about it, a footballer, a professional footballer, has to go through a lot. They have to spend a lot of time away from their family, especially if they're on international duty, um, playing the games away from their home, they end up staying at a hotel, there's a lot of training, they have to live by a strict diet, they have to live, uh, live by a strict regime in terms of fitness, they can't just go to the pubs and enjoy life with their mates, and the key moments in their life from their what, 18, maybe even younger all the way up to like 34 35 is a great time to go out with your friends and enjoy life in terms of drinking if you like drinking in terms of just socializing with footballers they can't tend to do that because if they do do that then they get picked up by press by fans by just not having the right attitude they've got if they do interviews and stuff like that they've got to be shown in a certain way and a lot of these players just want to live their life. They're a pro footballer. It's a job to them. And they might not necessarily be in love in football like a lot of other people are. And that's okay. To, for Marcus Madison to think about potentially quitting at 27 seems to suggest there's something seriously wrong within the football industry that we just don't understand who are not inside the football industry. Uh, you've got to remember it's very repetitive. They, they train, they play a game, they train, they play a game. And it's very, very repetitive. Competitive. And that takes its toll. If you do a job for so many years, you potentially get very bored of it. I think majority of people, I've been in a job for six years now, and I'm so bored, it drains me mentally. And this is why it also relates to me, because... He might not enjoy football, and if he does enjoy football, he's obviously there's a reason behind it. Maybe his mental health is not uh, as strong as it could be. And the fact that a lot of people abuse him, I've seen a lot of abuse on Twitter, I've seen some abuse on Instagram about Marcus Madison and his whole attitude. And the fact is, we don't actually know who he is. At 27, if he's suggesting that he wants to quit football, we are to blame. We are not there. We should be there to encourage, to support, to guide them you know these are footballers these are human beings at the end of the day they they play for our football club and if they hit a bit of bad form instead of jumping down their necks we should be there supporting them saying come on we know you're better than this but you can produce better you can do better uh, but we still believe in you and maybe that's what he needs maybe he just needs an arm around his shoulder and just say marcus it's all right mate um to just just prove what you can do. Instead of constantly being on his case, constantly wanting more goals for him, constantly wanting more assists, you hog the ball, you, you're too greedy, you're too slow, your work rate shit. We're constantly always looking for negatives and I want to highlight this because we should be looking for more of the positives, not in just Marcus Madison but all footballers. Like the whole race thing is unbelievable that you see on social media. The fact that you can think you can get away with being on social media behind the screen tapping away and you can freely abuse someone and your identity is not exposed because on Twitter and maybe for Instagram you can't you don't need like ID to link your profile to your name. And the fact that that is a major problem in football. I think if you have ID that links you to your account, then a lot of abuse will stop because you'll be made accountable. But right now, a lot of people are not made accountable for their actions, for the words they say to professional footballers. And I think that is something that really needs to change. And the, the understanding of mental health, I know it's becoming a big thing now in the in the public, which is great, but it needs to be massively in the in the football as well. Because not all footballers are just I don't know I don't really know the word. They're not um They're not immune from harassment from abuse from negativity and I'm a big believer in positivity the more positive news you have around you and the positive people you have around you and the positive vibes the better you are especially mentally and the, it can help develop physically as well um, but the the more negativity you have around you constantly people telling you crap telling you you're shit you're greedy you shouldn't be in my football club it must get to you and if he's playing in a team that's constantly winning you'd think there's something must be seriously wrong if he doesn't want to play in that team. And maybe he hasn't reached the expectations that he wanted to reach. Maybe he hasn't um, played the football or played for the teams or got the accolades that he would have liked to have. But we shouldn't be punishing that. We kind of should be supporting that. And I just wanted to make this video because it's super relatable to me. And maybe it might be relatable to one of you guys. I wanted to do like a, a serious football podcast slash interview. And I did ask Marcus Madison to appear. Um, he hasn't responded, which is completely fine. I don't 
expecting to. I've literally got no subs and maybe it's more important that he wants to sort himself out. He doesn't really want to be talking about it. And his Instagram maybe is a cry for help or maybe it's just a, a, a kind of showing people that it's okay to admit you're struggling. And that's what this whole video is basically. If you are struggling as a person or you see someone not being themselves or just seems a little bit different if that's your friends family just ask them if they're right just ask them and support them and be there for them when they need you and I just want to make this video for anyone who's it doesn't even matter if you like football or you want to be a footballer or anything like that if you're struggling and you need someone to talk to I am always here I, I like to do videos but I am a human being and I, I don't see you as a subscriber or a viewer I see you as someone else who likes to enjoy football as much as I do and if you enjoy that sort of stuff or you enjoy me listen or if you enjoy listening to me then please feel free to hit me up on Twitter I'll leave a link in the description down below hit me up in the YouTube comments if you want to just have a chat I'm more than open to do that but I just wanted to do this video today because this is a story a bit close to my heart and I just wanted to have pretty much my say on it but thank you if you watch this video all the way to the end I know I waffle on quite a little bit um, that's why I edit my videos quite a lot because I do just waffle about a lot of nonsense sometimes but this story is quite close to my heart I just wanted to express my thoughts so hopefully you did enjoy it. if you did um, please hit the like button down below and if you want to see more real videos like this then please let me know in the comment section uh, subscribe if you enjoy my content or if you just want to talk to me and I'll see you guys in another video.